I don't know who's writing real life now, but the story is insane. <laughs> First of all, that this hedge fund billionaire got away with running an underage sex ring for years, and secondly, that he lived right across the road <laughs> from Bill Cosby. <laughs> like, I don't know who the neighborhood watch is, but they're doing a shitty job. <laughs> like, seriously, how do two major sex criminals buy houses across the road from each... Like, what are the chances, huh? Is there a filter on Zillow that I'm unaware of? Is there? <laughs> There's like fireplace, secret sex dungeon. Oh, and doorman, doorman, definitely doorman. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Bill Cosby and Jeffrey Epstein on the same street. Talk about a dangerous neighborhood. Like, they could do a whole season of Law and Order that just takes place on that block. <laughs> just that block. <laughs> so, so the police raided Epstein's mansion, found lots of incriminating evidence, and threw him in jail. And today, Epstein's lawyers argued that he should be allowed to live under house arrest until his trial. Although I don't think house arrest is a good idea, because, I mean, the house is where all this shady shit allegedly went down. <laughs> it would be like Walter White getting to go wait for trial in an RV in the desert. It's like, well, that's, that's where it happens. <laughs> and you might be asking, where does Epstein even get the balls to ask for such lenient treatment from the law? Well, maybe it's because this wouldn't be the first time. In 2008, Epstein was accused of running this very same sex trafficking operation involving at least 40 underage girls. But those federal charges back in 2008 were dropped after Epstein received a controversially lenient plea deal. Epstein was only in county jail for 13 months and was allowed out to go to work six days a week. I'm sorry, everything is shady about this deal. Yeah, yeah, what is the right reaction there? <laughs> Not only did the charges get dropped, what he was charged for meant that he was going to jail, but he was allowed to leave prison for six days a week and go to work. Yeah. That's, that's not prison, that's just life. <laughs> you go to work every day, and then Sundays, you stay in. The only difference is he was living rent-free. I mean, can you imagine if you were sharing a cell with this guy? Epstein comes back to jail at night, and his cellmate is like, what a day, I spent 12 hours in solitary confinement, and Epstein is like, ah, oh, I wish I was in solitary. Starbucks was a zoo this morning. <laughs> Anyway, good night, Bill Cosby. <laughs> now... Now, one of the reasons this story has blown up isn't just because Epstein is a billionaire who was running an underage sex trafficking ring. It's also because the man who led him off with that lenient prison sentence went on to become Donald Trump's labor secretary. Yes. And now, because the story is blowing up again, Trump's guy has been forced to step down. The fallout from Epstein's case reached the White House Friday. Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta resigning his cabinet position after Acosta faced mounting pressure for his role in negotiating a controversial plea deal with Epstein as a U.S. attorney in Florida more than a decade ago. President Trump accepting the resignation while praising Acosta. Well, this was him, not me, because I'm with him. He was a... He's a tremendous talent. He's a Hispanic man. He's a Hispanic man? <laughs> what a strange thing to bring up when a guy is resigning. Like, <laughs> no other boss would do that. No one would be like, so, everybody, uh, today is Jerry's last day. Uh, he's Korean, and, uh, <laughs> there'll be cake in the break room. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so, the guy who gave Epstein that sweet deal has resigned in disgrace. But the question remains, how did Epstein manage to get away with just a slap on the wrist in the first place? Well, it turns out maybe it's because of how insanely connected he was. The 66-year-old has palled around with some of the most powerful in politics and business, including President Trump. In 2002, Trump called Epstein a terrific guy, adding, it is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do and many of them are on the younger side. Reporting this morning suggesting closer ties between the president and Epstein, a 1992 party at Mar-a-Lago billed as a calendar girl competition. A Florida businessman who organized it tells the Times 30 people attended this party. 28 girls, Mr. Trump and Mr. Epstein. That's the entire party. 28 women in a room with Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. It doesn't sound like a party. It sounds like an escape the room. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Pull on his hair. See if it does something. And it's not just Trump. It turns out Epstein has had powerful friends on both sides of the aisle. 
Mr. Epstein was also friends with former President Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton's office released its own statement. President Clinton knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeffrey Epstein pleaded guilty to. Clinton acknowledges he flew four times on Epstein's private jet in 2002 and 2003. Shante Davis was a flight attendant on the jet known as the Lolita Express because it allegedly shuttled underage girls between Epstein's homes. She told Inside Edition Clinton did nothing improper on those trips. She says she made him peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know, I'm... I'm glad the news got her to reenact the making of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich just so that we all know what that looks like. That was nice. That was nice. And clearly, clearly, this is, this is a man who had a lot of connections, right? It might explain how he got away with those heinous time, those heinous crimes for so long. Uh, and with these new charges being filed against him, many are wondering who he might bring down with him. Over the coming weeks, the story's gonna unfold. Uh, there's a good chance a lot of questions are gonna be answered, like how exactly Epstein made all of his money, which is shady. Which powerful people were involved in his sex ring? And most importantly, why his front door is so goddamn big? <laughs>